Hey folks, Phil Beeman here. Uh, as a few sharp eyes have noticed in a couple previous videos, I'm standing in front of a brand new easy loader. And this is in addition to the one I currently have. This is my thinking is, you know, what if I have a breakdown, either truck or the boom, or we get wet weather and I can't get my truck into my bee yards. If you recall last summer, had to, a couple of my yards last summer were only accessible by forklift for a short time. What if that happened all summer? Um, now, if you have a, if it rains all summer, you don't have much of a honey crop to get in, but you still got to get the work done. So, what I landed on, and I've been humming and hawing about this. I was well over a year ago looking at both the Apahunda and the and the easy loader and couldn't decide but then i heard that uh the dealer had a canceled order and had a machine on hand and i'm like done because uh i've put this off far too long so i'll take you through this a little bit i don't have to tell you my plans and then you can tell me if you think i'm crazy or not um so I only bought the model 125. This has a, a smaller capacity than the 300 that I currently have. Um, now I only use uh, my boom except for the odd time to lift honey. I hardly ever move bees with it. I've recently upgraded my forklift so it's even less likely. So, um, you know, the, the fact that this is a slightly lighter, 125 kilos is still quite a bit of weight. And it has uh, a safety mechanism. You can see that this, the end of this crane is on a, a hinge. And then there is a scale device there that uh, will prevent it from overloading. So I shouldn't, shouldn't break it. Because if you have one machine that's heavy and another machine that's lighter duty, there's a risk of screwing it up. Now, maybe all the new ones have that. I don't know, but uh, my current one doesn't. The Another nice feature is the brakes on this are much more positive. You can see these notches here. Uh, the old braking system was kind of like a 10-speed bike brake pulled with a, with a solenoid and it basically is useless. And uh, in fact, it's probably more dangerous than not having a brake at all because if you think it's going to work, it's not. These ones look like the solenoid will, will lock into those notches and you probably have to like engage the brake and then let it move until it clicks but then it should be solid from that point on. So I'm excited about that because if, especially if you're working by yourself and you want to lift a few boxes, put a bee escape in, you know, you kind of, do you let go and let the thing run away on you? You got to go after and catch it. Uh, it should hang there, but if you, uh, it only momentarily as the hydraulics sag a little bit over the course of even say 20, 30 seconds, they will start to run away. So, uh, so that's nice. The uh, door on the entry, uh, most of the panels are still screwed down, but there is a hinged uh, door with some pretty decent latches that do suck that thing uh, tight. And so that's also nice if you've ever been in the field and you have a little bit of a, say, a fuse or a circuit breaker go or something, getting into that thing can be a bit of a chore. So the fact that it's going to be accessible like that is nice. Um, and then, uh, what am I going to do with this thing? Well, here's my Kubota uh Loader. Now, this is not my, my beekeeper forklift, but it's kind of a utility uh, machine around the farm, and it really gets me out of a lot of scrapes. If the weather's bad, I typically move my bees out in the spring with it. 
and it's older, it's got a lot of hours on it, but boy, has it really uh, been good. And I've got the counterweight off of it, and you'll see that it's got these mounting setups here. Should maybe zero in on that a little bit. So there is the counterweight has two pins that are fitted permanently and you can put it on, it'll drop down into place. And then there's a one inch pin you can put through and then it's locked on. And I also have a backhoe for this machine. That's why the counterweight is removable so that you can remove the counterweight and put on a backhoe. And I don't use it much, but it's handy to have. So my thinking is, why don't I put the same setup on the easy loader and put it on the back of the Kubota? And so the Kubota or the, the easy loader will sit, you have to have it enough headspace to be able to work underneath it. So it'll kind of have to build a whole thing to mount it on here. And my neighbors are really good welders going to help me with that. And then the easy loader will sit up in this area here. So if it's wet weather, I'm going. And I can either load trucks or more realistically, probably set the honey on pallets and then drive the pallets out with the loader. And then I got thinking, well, once I do that, why don't I also make that same hookup arrangement and put it on the back of my old one ton so that I could mount it on that truck and use it. If for instance, my problem was that I had a breakdown in a vehicle that I could, you know, put it on the back of that truck, at least on a, on a temporary basis and then the way I go until the uh, the main truck is repaired. I had a, wasn't the truck with a boom. I had a good part of last summer, I was down to a 1B truck as the second of my big top kicks uh, was waiting on a very small part, but for a very long time. And that kind of scared me a little bit thinking about what I would do. So this gives me some redundancy, a little bit extra lifting power, um, that's my thinking, that be able to use that easy loader two different ways. And um, so I'll, we're just starting to plan that out. We've done some CAD drawings of, of what we need to build. And uh, it'll be, you know, it's probably several month project before the, we were really happy with the result here. But uh, hopefully by springtime, this sucker is ready to go. And then I guess the last virtue of this sort of you know, modular plan I've got is this unit that's brand shiny new will then go sit, lean against a wall in a shed somewhere until I need it. And it won't be out sitting in the sun depreciating as a, as a second redundant machine that hardly ever gets used. So it might spend, I mean, ideally, to be honest with you, it was expensive and I hated paying the money, more money for that than for a new forklift. But at the same time, I hope I never use it. Like if I go the next 20 years of beekeeping and never turn that machine on because I have never had a breakdown, we've never been too wet to run, I'm okay with that. And then, you know, whoever cleans up my estate can sell the damn thing. So um, that's kind of my thinking. I'm, you know, I'm kind of covering my butt and... Um, We'll see how that goes. Now, in terms of size capacity versus dollars, if you're thinking about buying one easy loader, um, it's not a ton of savings buying the smaller models. My guess is most of the value is in the technology, not in the steel. And so uh, only a little bit less money for less than half the lifting capacity, but it's less steel and less Let's iron a haul around. Like if you're if your beekeeper is going to use a smaller vehicle, uh, this is it is both narrower, so it has a shorter reach, but uh, and sits a little tighter. The boom's a little smaller. It's going to catch a little less wind. If you're thinking of mounting, uh, you know, something on a, a one-ton truck with like a 10, 12-foot deck, this should be all you need. But you would be in that case 
probably thinking mostly of handling hives in singles or at most two at once. Uh, you would not be thinking of handling four pack pallets at all. So, because it would never lift that kind of weight. So, uh, you know, you would, but I think for a beekeeper that's like their big truck is a one ton truck, that's probably the right size. And uh, so stay tuned. Uh, I'll, tr I'll use it at least a few times uh, this summer to make sure what I've set up works. Nothing worse than, you know, having a breakdown and then trying to engineer your solution. So uh, once we get this thing worked, we'll take it out for a day or two just to give it a really good uh, workout. And, and I'll bring you up to speed both on the progress of this project and the result. Thanks a lot, everyone. Have a great day.